Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to this, the latest in our series of Doha debates sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. The killing goes on in Iraq, province after province, street by street. Whichever way you look, the violence is out of control. President Bush says it's a war against terrorism. His critics say there wasn't any, at least in Iraq, before he invaded. So what does it take to stop this mayhem when the most powerful army in the world has so far failed? Which brings us to our motion tonight. This House believes that only a new dictator can end the violence in Iraq. Speaking for the motion, Sabah al Mukhtar, an Iraqi lawyer and president of the Arab Lawyers Association. He's a member of the Iraqi Bar Association and co authors the Arab and Islamic Law Yearbook. With him, Robert Baer, a former CIA officer who spent 20 years in the Middle East and operated in Iraq during the abortive uprising in 1995. He since emerged from the shadows to become a frequent commentator on security matters. He was also the consultant on the recent film Syriana, which mirrored some of his previous exploits. Against the motion, Adnan Pachachi, well known as the former president of the Iraqi Governing Council, formed after the 2003 American-led invasion. A year later, he was offered the post of president in the interim government, but turned it down. Also against the motion, George Galloway, expelled from the British Labour Party for his opposition to the war in Iraq. He's now the sole member of Parliament for the party he founded called Respect, but he plans to leave Parliament at the next election, although he promises to continue his highly vocal and controversial appearances. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. And now let me call first on Sabah al Mukhtar to speak for the motion. Thank you. We are discussing the way forward in occupied territories of Iraq, which is uh, a war of liberation there. There is no democracy in Iraq now. There was none before the occupation, and probably not even before. Democracy is a system of management which comes into play when there is a functioning state. That needs to be managed. There is no sovereign state of Iraq at the present moment to manage. There can never be democracy in a state of war, national emergency, and certainly not in a situation where there is an occupation and liberation. We have a vivid example in the United States of America after 9-11, when all, almost all rights were suspended of the citizens, we had the Patriot Act. We had all the other things which suspended most of the democratic process in that country. The, pre the pretense that democracy is a must at all times and in all places is totally a nonsensical exercise. States cannot be built by democracy. States are built by a group or one, one or more, to lead to build a state. And Iraq is in a situation where it needs to be built after the occupation. All creative ideas come through diktat, religion, politics. Every one of these ideas started by one, or more, a few, but certainly it wasn't the consensus of everybody. The war of libera liberation in Iraq, by its nature, is not a democratic process. It cannot be, we cannot talk of democracy when there is occupation. Democracy is a very good thing to have, but you cannot import democracy, nor can you impose it from the outside. Democracy requires the rule of the majority of the free, not the people who are under occupation. It's for these reasons I move that Iraq, in the present circumstances, needs a dictatorship to be rebuilt. Thank you. Sabah al Mukhtar, thank you very much indeed. You're a lawyer, so presumably you care about the rule of law. And when things get tough, you want to chuck the laws away. Explain that, will you? Well, 
uh, this is the nature of things. If we look at the present well, who time... Says it, who says it's the nature of things? You say it's the nature of things? Yes, what we, what, when you look at the trial of Saddam Hussein, when you look at the rule of law in the USA, when you look at the rule on terror, as it's called everywhere... Let's take the rule of law in the USA. You said after 9-11 that uh, democracy was effectively suspended? Of course. Of course? Of course it was. So justice was no longer uh, practiced in the courts? People no longer had representatives to represent their views in Congress? No, it is you decide what's the, democracy the, the, the these rule, days. The rule, you decide the, when a country no, is free. Rule, I think law, America would be the, pretty surprised to hear the rule that you law and the rule, right the rule of law and the, the rule of law and the rule of majority is a concept which percolates through all systems. Nevertheless, in building nations, you cannot have a democratic election. You can have leadership, whether it's one or more. However, even if they are called a council, a governor council. Council of Governors. Dr. Pachichi is one of the people who knows how to do these things. Sabah al Mukhtar, thank you very much indeed. Now let me ask Adnan Pachichi, please, to speak against the motion. Thank you. Practical measures are required and not wishful thinking fantasies about dictators and strong men. The people of Iraq have endured over the years every kind of dictatorship and absolutism. I know. I was there. Now they have had enough. I, ask, I assure you, they have no stomach for yet another dictator. But implicit in the call for a strong man is the belief or the notion that the Iraqis are somehow condemned by fate to live either in chaos and anarchy or in slavery under a totalitarian dictatorship. Democracy is our only hope for salvation. Contrary to what some people think, democracy has not failed in Iraq. The sectarian violence raging in the country came as a result of a distortion of democratic principles by the decision of the occupying powers to establish a political system based on sectarian divisions. But I believe there is hope to reverse this trend and return to the secularism under which the people of Iraq prospered and lived in peace and harmony for generations. Well, change will have to come by democratic means, through the electoral ballot. I hope that the next elections, in about three years' time, will bring about a fundamental change. If not, we have to try again and again, because democracy, with all its imperfections and its cumbersome inefficiency, is preferable to the rule of despots who mortgage the future of their people mm. and subordinate the interest of the country to their ambitions. Thank you. Adnan Pachichi, thank you very much indeed. You say democracy hasn't failed. Shortly before we came into the studio here, an American commander in Iraq, Admiral William Fallon, was asked about democracy emerging from the kind of violence that takes place on a daily basis in Iraq. And he replied, it would be wise to temper our expectations. In other words, it's over. No, I don't think it's over. I think it has had its difficulties. Difficulties? There's blood running in the streets. Yes, this is but not just difficulties. Democracy has is nothing it? to do with the blood. Well, the, the blood, blood is, is preventing the democracy the... from taking place, isn't it? What, yes. What, what does democracy mean when you have militias ruling the streets, when you're in fear of your life? Well, the fact that militias when 20% are... of the population is either dead or on the move. The fact that there are militias ruling the streets is not because of democracy, but in spite of it. We you say have... Iraqi people have had enough of dictators. Haven't they had enough of the situation that's going on now? But there's no other alternative. We, we, can't, we can't just give up. You can't give up. give up. The alternative is a strong man, isn't it? No. As I said, the strong man, we have, we have, uh, uh, we have <laughs> had experience of strong men for, for many, many years. And they are all dismal failures. Adnan Pachichi, thank you very much indeed. Now, can I ask please Robert Baer to speak for the motion? I support the motion fully. 
that Iraq needs to return to a dictatorship, a benign dictatorship, but nonetheless a dictatorship. I, I need to explain, first of all, that I was a participant in this fiasco, which is now Iraq. I was, in the mid-90s, chief of station, CIA chief of station in northern Iraq. And we were examining under what conditions we could remove Saddam Hussein without an invasion. We looked at how Saddam Hussein controlled Iraq. We went down to the very companies, the battalions, the Republican guards. We talked to the Shia, we talked to everybody. And what was clear was that Saddam Hussein held Iraq together by force, namely T-72 tanks, MI-24 helicopters, and the Mukhabarat. It wasn't pretty, it wasn't pleasant. We know more about Saddam than anybody would ever want to know, his brutality. But that was the nature of Iraq. In 1995, March 4th, 10 o'clock, we were supposed to launch a coup against Saddam which included five military generals and officers. And our plan was to leave the military in power, the Sunni minority, 20% of Iraq, and let Iraq return to a rule of law and democracy gradually. Within the US government, and I can only speak for the US government, we looked at Iraq as a shattered country. Look at the dates, 1258. Mongol invasion. A second one, 1401, immediately followed in the 16th century by the Ottomans. And then you had the Ottoman-Persian Wars that went on. Iraq was a shattered country which was held together by force. It was also a country prey to foreign interference, namely Iran. In the 60s and 70s, the CIA and the Shah attempted to get rid of Saddam using the Kurds. The Kurds at that point, I will be very politically incorrect, stopped being Iraqis because they sided with Iran. We now have a government in Baghdad. Most of the members were on Iranian payroll at one time or another. This is not the time for an American occupation and a British occupation to impose a democracy because any person we put in our government will look as a foreign government it will be the continued interference in Iraqi history that goes back to 1258 to the Mongol invasion. We need a general in Iraq who can follow the rule of law but act rationally. Robert Baer, thank you very much. Eight million Iraqis risked death, intimidation, threats to vote in elections. You now want to tell them it was all a waste of time and forget it. You think they would let you do that? You look at the violence in Iraq. We're talking about 25% of the population is displaced or in exile because right now you Iraq... You think those 8 million people wouldn't want to vote again? For the first gonna, three elections gonna, in 50 years? They're going to have to wait because they, right now they do not want to live with each other. The Shia, the Sunni, the Turkmen, the Kurds, they are not prepared to live with each other, let alone move into a democracy. And yet 65% of the country thinks it's going in the right direction. That's going in the right direction because they're dividing, they're partitioning. But if we want to hold Iraq together, you have to suspend democracy. For how many years, I can't tell you, but you must suspend it. Those 8 million don't want that, do they? We don't know. Who says you can't have a civil we war? We don't know that the Shia are not voting, in effect, for a Shia state. You look at what happened in Najaf this weekend. These are people that are committed to their sect. They are voting for their sect. If you're Shia and you all of a sudden have been offered Baghdad, a city that you've been excluded from, from 680, from the murder of the Prophet's grandson, of course you're going to vote, yes, I want. The Shia have won, but it's not going to add or contribute to a united Iraq. Countries emerge from civil wars and have democracies in the end. Why not this one? Look at Bosnia. It never came back together. Yugoslavia. Never. If the premise is we want to hold Never. It's been 10, 12 years. That's not never. No, there's, there's time. It, it takes time. It's still divided. It's an evolutionary process, democracy, isn't it? 
I am, Those eight I am million firm, people, you really think you can ram the genie back in the bottle after in, that? In 1933, democracy voted in Adolf Hitler. It doesn't mean democracy is always right, and sometimes you have to suspend it. Robert Baer, thank you very much indeed. <clears throat> now let me call please on George Galloway to speak against the motion. This is a motion that's asking you to endorse a new dictatorship. Dictatorship is the curse of the Arab world. Dictatorship, almost without exception, from Marrakesh to Bahrain, is the reason that the Arabs are divided and weak and the rulers and the big powers are stealing their wealth. Dictatorship has been a complete disaster for the Arabs and you're being invited to endorse an additional dictatorship now. Think what the Arabs could be if they were free from the Atlantic to the Gulf, all these people, all this oil, all this gas, one God, one language, one culture, Shahab, Arabi, Wahad, Wahad. That's what we need, one free Arab people. The idea, the idea that a dictator is going to solve the problem now that we have in Iraq. Which dictator? <clears throat> which one? Which of the gangs of New York that we've placed in power in Baghdad is going to be the dictator? Saddam Hussein cannot be dug up from the ground. It will not be him who will be the new dictator. Who will it be? You take your pick. I don't fancy any of them myself. My friend and my lawyer, Sabah al-Mukhtar, made the point earlier. There is a war of liberation now in Iraq, and I wholeheartedly support it. But it's not a war of liberation in order to install a new dictator. It's a war of liberation, surely, so that Iraq can be free and sovereign and dignified. And the only way to do that is by making the agreements and the alliances and the social peace between the different trends in Iraq. And that cannot be done at the point of a gun or the point of a bayonet. So reject the idea that dictatorship is the way forward. The Arabs unchained will have to be the Arabs democratic. George Galloway, thank you very much indeed. Just to remind the audience that I'll be coming shortly to you, so please have your questions ready. Mr. Galloway, what would be so wrong with a little benign dictatorship? People like their rulers in this region. I'm not sure that they do. How do we know that they do? Whoever well, tested... Well, when Sheikh the... Zayed died in the UAE in 2004, there was an outpouring of tremendous grief. He yeah, was much loved by his population. Ask anyone there in the UAE. Is, there is grief, uh, perhaps, for the passing of uh, iconic figures. There was more but, than that. But it nobody, was more than that. Well, nobody ever tested that. If these rulers are so loved, why don't they put themselves in front of an election and let's see how loved they are? Nobody believes these rulers are really the choice of their uh, people. Tim. So your objection, your objection is to dictators in general or just in this region? Well, dictators in general are a bad idea because they... Like your friend off, Fidel Castro, He's not for a instance. dictator. He's Fidel not a dictator? Ca don't compare Fidel Why Castro. Why isn't he a dictator? Don't com compare Fidel Castro to the... He runs what I'm Human Rights about. Watch calls an undemocratic government that represses no. nearly all forms of political I'll, dissent. I'll debate Cuba with you any time you like, but I doubt if I've got enough time to do so now. But I'll make this point. I'm flying, well, you think he's a Democrat, I'm do you? flying this evening to Caracas, Venezuela. What's that got to do with this? Everything. To speak at a rally at the weekend with the great Hugo Chavez. And one of the reasons Hugo Chavez is great is because he was elected time after time after time, despite the CIA, despite the American yeah, well, government. Yeah, we were talking we about Castro election, a moment after ago. Election, after election. You don't have anything good to say about the current government in Iraq. And you don't want a dictatorship. No, no what is, what is going to save Tim. the day in Iraq? Let's hear that from the, you. The liberation movement. Apart from slogans. The liberation movement will have to be brought into a national dialogue. Based, Who's going to do that? Based on the withdrawal of the invader occupying forces from the country. Who's going to do there that? There is a plan. The resistance, the Iraqi resistance, which every honorable and dignified Arab supports, everyone. The resistance movement has a plan, it should be implemented, 
the resistance the movement is on one is one movement. Come off it, George. The, the, the national resistance movement in Iraq has a peace plan based on the withdrawal Which of the Which part of the resistance movement? Based on Which part? the non-sectarian Arab nationalist resistance movement in Iraq, which every honorable and dignified Arab supports. And they have a plan. It can be implemented. It has to be a national dialogue between all the sects, between all the nationalities, and all the people of Iraq. I, unlike all you, right. unlike okay. that side of the argument. All right, we'll come I to that side faith. of the argument. I have faith in the Iraqi people. Thank you, George Galloway. We're going to take some questions now can, from the audience. Tim, can I just say one word? George was Say one word and then we're going to questions. George was trying to divert the attention. We're not talking about democracy in the Arab world because you all want democracy, not the Americans. But we are talking about Iraq at the present time, whether you can get it out of the mayhem which is in by democracy or by dictatorship. That's what we're discussing, all right. not the Arab Okay, issue. that was more than one word. Let's go to a gentleman over there. Good evening. My question is for you, Mr. Sabah. How would you feel if you were living under a dictator who would deny your basic rights? Of, like, you, you won't be a free person. You can't vote if you were living under a dictatorship. I mean, won't you feel bad about this as a lawyer? You are absolutely right. I will be f fighting against him. Then? I'm talking about the process now in Iraq, which is occupied. We're not talking about how you manage an ordinary country like from Morocco to the, to the Gulf. That's not what the motion says. The motion says we need a dictatorship in Iraq. In Iraq, yes, at the present moment. No, we need That's a, the situation. A new dictator, you say, now. You want yeah, at the present moment. Who That's what is he? Who is he? You want to come back? Yeah, the last thing. I mean, the path to democracy in the Arab world has never been easy. It requires patience. Don't you believe in your countrymen? I mean, don't you have patience? It needs wit and patience. You can't have democracy on a golden plate to be served to you at the same time. Everything needs time, especially democracy in Iraq. Why shouldn't Iraq be the first country to begin with and impose or implement democracy? In? Oh, democracy is a beautiful thing to have, but not in an occupied country. You but they're have working, the Americans they're working occupying on it. it there now. You should have just a, a bit more patience. I mean, the solution... Oh, we have no problem with that. Once it's liberated, they must have democracy. Thank you. All right, let's have a question from the lady in the third row there. You have your hand up. Good evening. Uh, my question is for the people for the motion. Uh, ultimately, dictator has the same connotations. It has one definition. You just got rid of Saddam Hussein, so the next dictator is going to be better? I mean, all dictators are the same at the end of the day. So what have you done if you've just gotten rid of Saddam Hussein and then put another dictator just to take his place? Robert Bay. What you're going to do is keep people alive, frankly. And to look at Iraq now where hundreds of thousands of people are being killed and for us on the outside sitting here and saying you know we'll be a little more patient maybe we'll lo lose two million three million in the name of democracy it's easy for us to say but for the Iraqis being blown up by suicide bombers people being shot people starving the babies dying democracy is irrelevant for them now what we want is a is a rule of law with a tyrant behind it. And I'm not necessarily a tyrant. Tyrant's a bad word, but a military officer who's going to let people go to the market in the morning and the rest of it. And I fully agree that this, should not, this cannot be imposed by the United States or any other country. But we do not have democracy in Iraq now, and we won't. Lady in the front row. Mr. Galloway, you said that the answer is the formation of one Shab Harabi, but with so many conflicts within the Arab world itself, how do you suggest that these conflicted nations put their differences aside and form this ideal Shab? It's my argument that it's dictatorship which has created this situation. Sykes-Picot, in the building where I have sat for 20 years, with their pencils, invented all these many countries. And they chose, in those days, corrupt kings, now added to puppet presidents, to put in charge of these many states. But I have traveled the Arab world over and over, from the Atlantic to the Gulf, and it is one people, with one language, believing in one God. And its potential... And if fighting wars achieve, against each other. Yes, because the dictators <clears throat> fight wars, and the imperialist <clears throat> countries want them to fight wars. Why do they sell them weapons? Why did Saudi Arabia buy billions of pounds worth of weapons from Britain? Who are they going to fight? They're going to fight Israel? 
No. The, the reason for the, the, the division is the dictatorships. And the key is democracy. If the Arab people were free, they would elect free governments that would govern their countries in the interests of their own people and not in the interests of the others. Okay, let's take a question from up there. Gentleman up there. Do you think that democracy is going to end the violence, especially if democracy is led by the U.S.? Adnan Pachichi, let me bring you in here. Well, you see, the, uh, let me begin by saying this. We heard uh, something speak, somebody saying maybe a benign dictator. My answer is, how can you guarantee that he's going to remain benign? We know very well that dictators, that's what experience has shown. Dictators cling to their uh, power tenaciously and will not give up voluntarily. And they use every means at their disposal, every brutal means to stay in power. So you cannot really uh, gamble that, this, that a dictator is, is benign and he's going to remain benign and will be completely uh, free of, of, of personal ambitions. Well, that doesn't answer my question. Uh, you talked about dictatorship. I was talking about democracy. Yeah, no, but I haven't finished. But it's, it's not like if we don't have a dicta you know, if we don't have democracy, then it, the, the, the answer would be dictatorship. You said, uh, can democracy end the violence? Yes, I think probably democracy has a better chance of ending the violence, the violence than a dictator who is imposed by a foreign power. Hasn't done so well so far. George Galloway, you wanted to come in. <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, you don't know me well if you think I'm advocating the U.S. as a model for democracy. No, my point is this. The outcome of the revolution in Iraq, of the national liberation struggle in Iraq, if it is to just produce a dictatorship, it will not have been worth the blood. It will not have been worth the trouble. But if the national liberation struggle in Iraq leads to the rout of the invaders, which I believe that it will, and it is replaced by a government of the people, for the people, by the people, elected by the people, removable by the people, that would be a real beacon for the whole of the I totally world. agree with you, but is that going to happen in the next few months, well, where we can end the I'll violence currently? I'll tell you this, it will never happen if you agree now to a new dictatorship in Iraq. All right. Because the one thing I agree with Dr. Pachachi on is that once you get a dictator in, however benign he says he is at the beginning, he'll stay a long time and he won't be benign by the end. All right, of it. we're going to move on to a lady in the third row there, please. Good evening. I wanted to ask the motion for this, uh, oh, the party for, a country which is already forced and which is shattered. Can you think by dictatorship, by dictatorship it can be changed? Liberation movement needs leadership. Dictator, by its nature, it is leadership. Now, you could have, I know we've said about benign and what have you, but liberation requires leadership. Muhammad in Islam, he was a, a leader. Mao Zedong in, in China was a leader. Castro, you can name anybody. You cannot have a liberation movement by consensus. Some, People put uh, uh, papers in a letterbox and it, they decide whether it's going to have, we liberate the country. That's why you need the leadership. The leadership, I am not advocating a man. I don't know what arrangement there is. But there must be something which is not coming out of the postal box when you are talking about liberation. This is the leadership they require. Democracy is a management. It's when you have something which is working, functioning, then you have a process, how you do things. You have ministers, you call them in, and you ask them, and they have to reply, and they have to do this. But liberation movement, the army is not based on democracy. There's no army in the world where the uh, army officer will ask the soldiers, should we go this way or that way? That's not how it works. You have a leader who orders, and people work until you get there, and then after that, they may assassinate the, the leader. They may kick him out, as Britain did with Churchill, he took them to the war, he won the war, and immediately after the war, the process back again, Churchill was thrown in the rubbish bin. All right, perhaps we can hear from some of the Iraqis. I know there are quite a few Iraqis in the audience here. Would uh, some of them like to put up their hands? Are you from Iraq? Perhaps you'd like to have a question to our panel. Good evening. Uh, uh, my question to Mr. George Kelly. I'm Iraqi and I know like we are from uh, different cultural backgrounds, different uh, religious all together in one country. It's 
it's like something impossible to keep us all together under, uh, uh, like, control us. It's something very difficult. I know this. But uh, if I give you an example, Ayad Alawi, when controlled, uh, when he was in the government and ruled Iraq for a period of time, uh, he had the ability to make the situation quite stable relatively to current situation. So what do you think? Well, I certainly don't agree with that about Iyad Alawi, but that's a different matter. Democracy is not just about the majority ruling. The minority has rights in a democracy. And what I'm talking about when I talk about democracy is government of the people, for the people, by the people. This is not just a case of 51% get the hands up and they rule ruthlessly over the 49, no. And it's possible. There are many schemes in the north of okay. Ireland, for example. Let him, let but, him come back. He wants to but come what back. is the use of the democracy if uh, we have thousands of children dying every day, thousands of men, women, people couldn't go and study and live? What the hell? I told you, I, I told you I'm not here to support his democracy. I, I, I spit upon his democracy. No, it's but he's, puppet, asking, you, he's puppet, asking you a valid is, question. No, it's a puppet regime. You're not regime. addressing his question. It's a puppet regime. You've that said that many of. times, but yeah. you're not addressing his well, question. Well, I am addressing his question because it's a false dichotomy. <coughs> I'm arguing for democracy, real democracy in a sovereign, independent Iraq. That's what I want to see. What I'm not you asking want? you to what vote for him. What do you want to see? Do you want I'm to see a strong man? I'm not asking you to man? vote for Malaki. Let me, let me just ask him what he wants. <laughs> yes, it's, you. It's, it's, democracy nowadays in Iraq, it's something impossible. It's something impossible. So you, you, I want to find a solution for the for current situation. What? Dictatorship is the best solution right uh, now. This is Robert Baer, no, no. Wait, I, can I go back to one point? Is you know what Iraq needs, and I think you're absolutely right. Is a Fidel Castro. You've got the Turks coming in from the north. You've got Saudis coming in from the south, and you've got the Iranians. You need a strong man, a leader, just as Fidel Castro protected Cuba. We need one in Iraq. The same sort of fatherly, call him whatever you want, a dictator. I don't want to live under Ooh, dictatorship. This is coming from a CIA guy. I don't. <laughs> we're hearing we're all shades. We're, we're, we're hearing all shades of but, the, but I, I agree. Democracy is irrelevant. I don't want to live under dictatorship. I don't if, want that. No, you, no one wants dictatorship. Yeah. But we, what we but need. But it's the best solution for current situation. If you can't go to the market, what good is democracy? You can't even show up at the urns now. You can go live in Jordan. You can live in Syria. Okay, Adnan Pachachi, you wanted to come in here. Yes, I just want to uh, make a comment on what my uh, colleague said. This is not my democracy. No, sure. But you this were, is, no, no. Excuse you, me. Let you me were continue. A part of the fact of the matter is, in spite of the uh, fraud. Which, and the uh, irregularities and intimidation, 12 million people, not 8 million by the way, 12 million people voted. And thousands of Iraqis voted outside Iraq. This was not a, an ideal vote, it was not a perfect vote, but the fact of the matter is, with all its imperfections, you can say that uh, it represents to some extent, the desires of the Iraqi people. And we should not ignore that. But All right, I'd like, I'd like to ask someone in the audience from Iraq whether they would like to speak up in support of the fledgling democracy, if you can call it that, in Iraq. Is there anybody from Iraq who'd like to do that? You, sir. Dr. Pachachi can do that. <laughs> uh, just good evening. Just I, wa I want to just say something like um, you, Mr. Robert. You said like Shia doesn't don't want to live with Sunnah. Uh, with all respect, like no, no, like you don't know what's the situation in the street. Uh, my father is Shia and my mother is Sunni, so I guess they want to live together. I want to live with my <laughs> friends from Shia. I want to live with my friends of Sunnah. It's. It's not like they, they don't want to. It's the problem is they can't. Why they can't? Because of the violence. The, the issue here, the, point, the main point of this event is not like the democracy and dictatorship, I think for me at least, uh, it's the violence in Iraq. The violence in Iraq doesn't stop by either like dictatorship or, or having democracy. You, Mr. Tim, uh, you, you asked like George Galloway, so you are in favor of democracy or in favor of dictatorship. That's, not, and like he's, I don't know if he's not sure or whatever, but I think it's the, po the point is that we don't have, it's not the two extremes. We so, can, what, so what is the answer in your view? We want a leadership, a strong leadership. 
they, they only have to do what they have to do. That, that, what we trust them there for. I, di I didn't have like to go all through all your studies about s politics and stuff to know like whether you don't say your opinion or you say it and you don't, it's not listened to, it's the same as not having democracy. So, so you want a strong leader but not a dictator? Yes. A strong leader emerging from strong a democratic process. Strong leader is not process. a dictator. Strong leader is not a dictator. That's the point. Thank you. Gentlemen, uh, sorry, a lady in the second row there. You've had your hand up for a long time. Um, do you think that the problems between the Sunni and the Shia will ever stop whether there is a dictator or not? Who would you like to answer that? Both of them. <laughs> George Galloway, you want to try that? Well, you know, I traveled uh, between 1993 and just before the war to Iraq so many times. I never met one person who ever told me they were a Sunni or a Shia. I'm with a friend here. I met families who were both. I met people who really were neither, who were secular, who were nationalists, who were Arabs, first and foremost, Iraqis first and foremost. I think the Iraqi people are the least sectarian people in the Arab world. I have real faith in the people of Iraq. So I believe that all Iraqis, whatever their confession, should support the liberation struggle to drive the foreign occupiers from their country and make a united democratic country out of it. Adnan Pachichi, you're not cheering on your compatriot. You agree with him? <laughs> the vast majority of Iraqis, both Sunnis and Shias, are not involved in this sectarian violence. On the contrary, I think the vast majority of Iraqis, of all sects, want to live in peace together as they have uh, throughout the ages. And I think George Galloway was right in saying that uh, you, you don't feel that there is that, that difference. What's happening is you have militias who act in the name of a sect, but in fact they are after consolidating their power and, uh, and in order to extort some money from, from, from their victims. And who do you blame that on? Sorry? And who do you blame that on? Well, I blame it, as I said, on uh, uh, the occupying power which established a system based on sectarian division. That, I think, gave birth to all that. And also the activities of, of, of neighboring countries who, who, who encourage this. But let me say one thing in the end, you know. Uh, uh, democracies can provide strong leadership. We have seen that uh, so often in the United States, in Britain, in so many democratic countries. The idea that democracies can't have strong leadership is a lot of nonsense. In fact, democracies are more efficient than dictatorships in, in pursuing, uh, for example, a struggle or war or anything of that kind. And look, let me tell you something. Democracy is here to stay in Iraq, no matter what anybody else says, because the people have tasted democracy with all its imperfections, with all the problems, with the, uh, the presence of the occupation. But democracy is there to stay, and I don't think the Iraqis will ever, ever again are prepared to sacrifice the, the rights which they have already enjoyed in order to have yet another dictator who, who will... Uh, I've got a question, and it, there's some historians here, and I'm, I'm supposed to be answering questions, but when has there ever been a people that have voted themselves out of a civil war? I don't know. Has there been ever a time in history when someone said, all right, we've had enough, let's vote ourselves out? It's absolute nonsense. But they are not all involved in this civil war. There is no civil war. I'll Victor give you an Pachete, example. Americans you an example are bombing of Haifa Leonard. Street in the center of Baghdad. And you tell me this is not a civil war? What the hell is a civil I'll, war I'll, then? I'll, 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 who, I'll who, a... who was fighting the civil war? There's no such thing. All right, we're going we're gonna to move to another question. Lady in the second row there. Good evening. My question is the people for, for the people for, against the motion. You are talking about having democracy in Iraq. So could you please give us ways to apply that democracy in Iraq during that current events? Very. Thank you. Sorry, well, How would you apply democracy in Iraq during the events that are going on at the moment? There is no democracy in Iraq. There is a foreign occupation. There are sectarian collaborators with that foreign occupation some of whom have very large militias, which they pretend are policemen or members of the Iraqi National Army. There is no democracy in Iraq at the moment. 
for these and the other reasons I've given in this program already. There is a liberation struggle to throw out the foreign occupier. My case, although it's being misrepresented, my case is that the end result of that must be a democracy. That's what must come after the foreign occupiers have been driven out, a democracy. If it's just another dictatorship, just another Arab dictatorship, as if we didn't have enough Arab dictators, it won't have been worth the blood. I don't believe the motion is whether democracy is functioning or not. No. The motion is should we have a new dictator in Iraq? Exactly. It was a question that came it, from the floor. The motion, motion I'm supporting is we need transition, strong man, call him a dictator, call Absolutely. him whatever you want. Absolutely. Transition. Absolutely. At the end of the day, we want democracy. But now, the only way to stop the violence Do you mean transition is a strong by man. man. Only, only, all right. uh, five men, I don't care. Come on, who's, who's going to... Well, we, it's, it's all right. No, 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 this yeah. is a very I'll, important I'll answer, point. I'll answer you. Yes. We will do another lot of boxes, we will fill them papers, which you are telling us about going 12 to million the people. Dictator Chalabi, Dr. Pachic, you know very well that even the election commission is under trial. Who is going, going to about? choose a dictator? Give oh, me the, an answer. The ones the, that it will be, first of which all, one do you want? the, the resistance. Well, no, 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 no. Let him, let him speak. speak. Hold the, hold the, hold the, hold the, George, you, you know very well, to you know very well, I'm not talking about the military. Who is I'm, going to choose a dictator? I'm telling you. It's Tell the I'm telling you. Tell me quickly. If, openly. If, 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 you, if, you, if you stop talking, I'll tell you. If you stop talking, I'll tell you. We just have one person if you, at a time. If you please. stop talking, I will tell you. It is the resistance which is going to create and find the leader for Iraq that it will liberate it and take it into a process of state where you can have democracy. Thank you. You mean after the Americans leave, is that what you are saying? After right. the Americans leave, yeah. yes. After Absolutely. The Americans leave. Okay, well, we're going to ask somebody from the audience. You, sir, third, third round. My name is Rad Abdi. I'm an Iraqi who's living 30 years outside Iraq. <clears throat> My question is to Mr. Robert. What do you think, uh, knowing what you know about Iraq, uh, what Condoleezza Rice has said, uh, creative chaos, is it planned by the American to look like that? Or, uh... I, would, I wish I could tell you that what's happening in Iraq was planned. It would appear to be some competence in the U.S. government. There isn't any. Um, you, you look at, there's a, there's a New York Times came out with an article. They called around everybody in Washington and said, do you know the, the difference between a Shia and a Sunni? And nobody knew the hmm. difference. Unfortunately, the United States went into Iraq having no idea about the country. Let's face the facts. And we're paying, we're paying a price. You can say it was for oil, you can say it's Creek chaos, you can say it's racism, but the United States didn't know. We we're misled into this war, but stick to the facts. And the question is, how do we get out? And I, as an American, I have a superficial knowledge of Iraq and the Middle East. We need the rule of law and a strong man who will take control of the streets so the Iraqis can go back and live and then to make their own democracy. With the Americans gone, I agree. It can't, you can't have foreign occupiers in Iraq so making I would democracy. I would do. I'd, I'd like to hear your position, if yeah. we may, on the motion. Uh, I think actually Iraq needs a strong man, but he doesn't have to be a dictator. That's a dictator. All right. yes. Dictator is a bad word in the English language, as much as I understand. It's a bad word. It's a strong man. But it's the word that you signed up for. <laughs> what's, what's your recipe? Pardon me? What's your recipe? Yeah, uh, one thing, actually, I just want to assure Dr. Adnan that the next strong man or dictator, especially underline the dictator, will be selected by... Mr. Robert Kelly, colleagues, the CIA. Oh, well. This is for sure. I left the CIA <laughs> under very unpleasant circumstances. <laughs> so I can't really speak for them. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the point in the proceedings where we're going to vote on the motion. The motion that this House believes that only a new dictator can end the violence in Iraq. Would you please take your voting machines? If you want to vote for the motion, would you press button one, the yellow button? If you want to vote against, please press button two, the red one, and would you please do it now?
through the wonders of modern science, your vote will be transmitted to our computers and we'll get the results shortly. And here are the results coming up now on the screen. For the motion, 33.1% against 66.9%, the motion has been resoundingly defeated. It only remains for me now to thank our distinguished panelists for making the journey here. Thank you to you, the audience, as well. The Doha debates will be back again next month. For now, from all of us on the team, thank you very much indeed. Good night. Thank you.